because there are only 10 topics. Topic number one, Sox sweeping the Red Sox, or excuse me, walk-off Red Sox. The Red Sox had two walk-off wins in the ALDS. That one is Christian Vasquez right there with the walk-off homer. Game three, I was at the game. It was friggin' awesome. And then, of course, they had the walk-off sack fly by Kike Hernandez in game four. Brandon, man, this, this Red Sox team, I think, is surprising a lot of folks, and the walk-offs are making it exciting. Yeah, I mean, it, it, definitely an exciting time here in Boston to be watching this team, and and I think they're hitting their stride at the right time. Obviously, to go ahead and to, you know, dispatch the Tampa Bay Rays, who is one of their biggest rivals, but is also one of the best teams in baseball right now because they were had the best major uh, best record in Major League Baseball coming into the playoffs. I believe won 120 games. So it's it's a big deal to be able to just knock them off and get rid of them early and to move on further into the playoffs. But this was not an easy series to win, like I said, because Tampa Bay has haunted the Boston Red Sox in years past. So to get by them, I think, is a huge relief for Alex Cora and the Boston Red Sox. And I, I think now, you know, sky's the limit for them in the playoffs um, after beating this Tampa Bay Rays team. And, and obviously to do it in this fashion, too, what an exciting fashion to do it with those two home runs in front of the home crowd too. And me personally, I think once I saw that they, you know, split the series there in Tampa Bay, I said, I think it's an easy win for the Red Sox. I think they're going to come home and win pretty much all the games at home. And that's exactly what they did. Came back to, you know, familiar settings and just played well, like they've done all year long playing at Fenway Park. And, you know, Fenway is such a historical site, and, and there was just some more history added with those two home runs. Yeah, no question. I mean, usually Red Sox teams hit well in Fenway. A lot of times their lineups are built to hit well in Fenway. One of the things about this year, too, is they've kind of, you know, they were in first place for a long time. Then they had the COVID spread. They, they kind of went in a little bit of a slump pitching. You know, their bullpen was really kind of burnt out. Uh, at a certain point during the year. Then they get swept by the Yankees towards the end of the year. And a lot of Sox fans are saying, number one, are we even going to make the playoffs? And then number two, are we going to be able to go anywhere? And me as a Red Sox fan, I was like, this team isn't going to win the World Series. They're just not, they just don't have the horses, you know? Um, but as you look at it now, they were able to get through the COVID thing. They were able to kind of, their bullpen was bolstered by a starter in Nick Pavetta, who, you know, has yep. is now more of a middle reliever for them. Um, you can also bring in Sale at certain points if he doesn't start for you. You have, you know, Evaldi's essentially your ace right now. Erod actually pitched okay the other day. We've said a few times with Erod, we even had a segment that said, you know, is Erod going to get any better? And he probably isn't at this point, I don't think, but he gets through the four or five innings, you know, throughout the regular season, and that's not good enough in the regular season. But in the postseason, all these teams are pitching their starters four or five innings now. So he can kind of get to that point that all these teams are able to get to where they can then use a ton of pitchers in their bullpen because they're not playing back-to-back-to-back-to-back. -back -back -back. They have one, maybe two back-to-back -back games, and then they, they travel, they have a day off. So um, in the postseason, you don't necessarily need that seven, eight-inning starter. So the Red Sox can kind of piece this together a little bit with their pitching staff. With their lineups, I mean, it's just been exciting because they don't necessarily have a ton of mashers on this team. I mean, Hunter Renfro mashed home runs during the season. You know, J.D. Martinez, good hitter. Bogarts and Devers are probably their two top hitters. But they have guys like Christian Vasquez, who we saw hit the walk-off home run in Game 3, and then Kike Hernandez, who hit the walk-off sack fly in Game 4, who are just kind of clutch players. They don't have great averages. They're not, their OPSs aren't through the roof with getting on base and hit for power, but they're just clutch. They seem to come through in the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings, um, and that's what we're seeing right now. So, and maybe this is enough. You know, Maybe this is enough for the Red Sox to win the World Series, uh, but they've certainly been a lot of fun to watch, and these walk-offs have been a ton of fun to watch. We hope it continues now in the ALCS. Yeah, I agree. We definitely hope it continues. And you brought up a great point with how the season was a lot of up and down, up and down for them. But right now they're playing pretty consistent. And hopefully, like I said, hopefully it's a good time for them to hit their stride and be able to just ride it into the more of the postseason. But just quickly, I think that play that Schwerber made at first, you know, that routine play, and then he had that great celebration uh, I just saw a lot of great comments from Boston fans saying, you know, that's the type of excitement baseball needs and some showmanship and some fun 
Um, so I'm hoping I'm hoping that we see some more of that and it gets just better too because obviously it's it's professional sports but it's still sports and we're here to enjoy it and have fun. Um, but hey, let's move on to topic number two tonight. <laughs> 